Hey guys, this is Travis from Silver Lake Photo and I've got something kind of cool to show you today that coincides with a new series of backdrops we're releasing called Monochromania. Um, I get questions from photographers pretty frequently about images like this and they want to know whether I'm gelling my lights. And yeah, you could do it that way, but I'm totally cheating the system on this. And rather than using gels, I'm using just regular white baking flour in these instances and you know water colored water in these instances and going in after the fact and toning it into whatever color I want. I like to do things this way because I can key it to their outfits, their wardrobe, and I'm not stuck to the color, whatever color I decided in the beginning. I can change my mind at any time. So like I say, this is a very simple, quick technique and we're gonna use this to do the same thing with some grayscale backdrops. I love to use a grayscale backdrop because it can either be gray and not draw attention to itself or I can tone it using that same method to any color I want. So stay tuned for a second and we'll show you exactly how this is done in a few quick and simple steps. So the idea behind the Monochromania series of backdrops is that photographers by nature are very creative people and over the years we've had multiple requests for from photographers saying, look, I really love this design, but I'm not sure I want to be locked into, you know, the color that it comes in. Is there any way I could get it done in a gray? So we thought, why not uh, put these together in a series that are just gray designed specifically for this purpose? Uh, some photographers want to gel these with lighting, and that's perfectly acceptable. Some are going to do color treatments in Photoshop, but I'm just going to show you a couple of really quick ways to take a, a gray backdrop and change it into whatever you'd like. So, for instance, this is a, I mean, you can do this, it's the same treatment with any backdrop, but it does help to start with a neutral, a gray, white, and black, uh, because then you're not running into contamination of colors when you're putting something, you know, additional on there. But, so for instance, this sports team, we like to kind of match the color harmony of the images with the school colors that uh, each student has for their team. So, for instance, let's maybe start with a red here and you got to be careful with red I would say uh, tend to go to a cleaner deeper red and not allow it to go pink because pink on dudes not so good so we're just gonna totally freeform we're gonna create a new layer here there we go so this looks really bad at first but like I say it'll come together so we're just gonna paint in where we think we might want some red effect in here like so and now let's see what we can do to make it look a little less preschool a little more professional let's change our blending mode over to say we've got plenty of options colors are bringing lots of color Oop, that was not color that's saturation color there we go and that doesn't look too bad kind of like that uh, if we want to bring in some blue, you know, make this more of an all-American thing, let's maybe sample his Levi's, go with a bit bolder blue there, and then just brush in our blues in places. I'm trying not to get it on him so much. Something like so. And if we feel like this looks a little blob-ish, there's a really quick and easy trick to fix that. Just take your layer here and run, say, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then just look and decide how much blur you want there. Enough to you know, smooth up your transitions a little bit, but maybe not enough to really... I mean, if you go too far, you're going to lose a lot of your the colors are going to start blending together, which may be the look you want, but maybe not. So, I mean, I'm going to say somewhere in uh, 64 range for this one. Okay. And then we can always go back in here too and pop a mask onto this layer and brush out a couple of, you know, areas that we're not as crazy about. And what's going to show through is the, the gray underneath. So, I know you like to keep some grays and whites going just seems to add a little more depth but anyway yeah you can get as creative with this as you like 
Uh, it's, it's completely customizable to what your personal tastes. Now, if you don't want to hand color your images, this is a, an effect I use quite often when I want multiple colors involved, but I don't feel like painting them in in certain sections. Gradients can be really handy with this type of thing. So let's put a, an adjustment layer on here that is a gradient. And if you look, Photoshop has some, I mean, your basic gradients that come with Photoshop are a little limiting, but if you type, if you Google Photoshop gradients, you will come up with tons and tons and tons of options that you can use just straight out of the box. So we're just gonna pick one because we're gonna modify this anyway. So maybe something with a few colors in it, something like that. Okay. And I want to do, what I want to do with this is try to match the angle of uh, the graphics on her riding gear. So let's turn this into a blend mode that we can use. Probably going to run with soft light or overlay potentially. Okay, and let's go back into this gradient and try and match this angle up a little bit. So somewhere in that realm. Now we're going to start tweaking on this actual gradient. So we're going to try and mimic the colors that are going on in her riding gear. Click on the gray. Change it to a pink to match what's going on in her sleeve there. Somewhere in there. Okay. Let's click this blue and change that to this yellow. Okay. And let's click this blue and change it. It's kind of already close, but somewhere in that blue range that she's got going on in her leg. Okay, somewhere like that. So I can tell you already that this uh, blending mode we have overlay is a little strong for this. Let's try color. Okay, still a little strong. Let's go with soft light. Hey, okay, now we're getting close. So, what I want to do, go back into the gradient, just look at it one more time. If these lines are too sharp for us, we just have to put some distance between those two colors. And you can mess with the median blend point on these as well. There's a number of ways to do that. But for this, we're just gonna put a little bit of distance between those, like so, and click OK. And then we're just gonna mask this off of her, pretty much. So we've got a layer mask created automatically for this gradient fill. And then we're just gonna get our brush, click on the mask, and then start somewhat carefully pulling this lighting effect off of her and her outfit because it'll contaminate her colors. Something along these lines. If you leave it in her hair, it can look like it's a lighting effect. And sometimes I'll do that, sometimes I won't. Uh, I do want to pull it off the helmet so that we get a pure pink going here. And I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to look like, you want it to look good, but you don't want to kill yourself doing this. Or else it should be doing something more effective with your time, correct? So I kind of like this lighting effect in her hair. I think I may leave it. And then I'm just going to make sure, clean it up off her outfit a tiny bit more. Just like so. And I may even decide that this, these lines are a little hard for me, which is really simple. Just get a really big soft brush and come down that line, maybe in somewhat of an irregular pattern. Like so. And there you go. Quick, easy coloring on a gray backdrop. And the gray didn't look bad. This is kind of funky too, kind of cool. And we've got to set it at like a 92 opacity. Maybe even drop it down to 72. Looks good. There you go.
beyond the color treatments we were talking about earlier, you'll notice that all of these color smacks that are in the, the monochromania special we're doing include a complementary high resolution digital. Now, we're including these because you can do some pretty cool things with these as overlays or textures in your projects to kind of dress up like fairly plain looking images and turn them into something a little more unique. So for instance, we'll just drag this on over, size it to where we want it. Just something to help with the um, composition of this shot. Maybe we can stretch it if we want to. Let's try something like that. We're going to change the blending mode to let's try overlay. Yeah, overlay looks pretty cool. And then we're just simply going to brush him back out of that. Sometimes overlay is a bit much. Let's see what soft light looks like. Soft light's okay, but I think for this one I'm like an overlay. We're going to put a mask on this. Oops, mask. And we're just going to brush the texture off of our subject pretty quickly. I've got it set at about 30%. I like to build these things up a little at a time. We're just a little careful around him so as to get the texture completely off of him but not leave obvious haloing around him. And I'm going kind of quick here but I think you get the idea. Yeah. Run it off his hand and so on and so forth. And you can be as particular as you would like to be, but the point is you know, I think we might just brush it off the skateboard. Take a little bit off the floor down here and call this a day. So the point is, you start out with sort of a plain, you know, not a bad shot, not a great shot, nothing particularly cool. Add a little bit of a texture that adds some depth to it. And you've got something that's like a completely different look for the studio. Um, very, very quick, very simple. So, like I say, check these out. See what you think. And let us know how they work, work out for you.